This is Michael Carnes. In this video, I'll show you how to create a 3D link using a pair of exponential audio reverbs. In order to create 3D reverb, there are a few simple rules you need to follow. First, you must have a workstation that supports multiple output stems, such as Pro Tools or Nuendo. You must link the same reverbs, Phoenix Verb Surround links to another Phoenix Verb Surround, and R2 Surround links to R2 Surround. Reverbs are linked in pairs, one reverb for low and the other for high. You can link as many pairs as you need for your mix. High and low reverbs can have dissimilar channel counts. Create the space you need. More channels will create a more realistic space. Never link two reverbs on the same track. You'll get feedback. There may be a few other things you'll need to keep in mind, depending on your workstation. We'll see that at the end of the video. Let's take a look at this simple mix. You'll see right away that I have four reverbs. You'll also notice that I've labeled a pair of channels as low and high. The low channel gets input from an aux bus, and the high channel doesn't receive any input at all. You can see that there's no signal in the high reverb. That's just what you'd expect in this configuration. Now we'll bring up the 3D page. Almost everything is grayed out because we haven't yet linked. Up here, we can see the name of this particular copy of the reverb. It was automatically generated when we created the plugin. Over here, we can see a list of all the other reverbs that are available for linking. The names aren't very descriptive, are they? If we have a lot of plugins, we're going to be confused. So let's give names to our plugs. We'll name this one Low Dialog Reverb. And we'll name this one High Dialog Reverb. We can name the other plugins later. Now we're ready to create a link. Let's go to the list of available plugins again, and we can now see our more sensible names. To create the link, all we have to do is select. This can be done from either plugin. The first thing you'll notice is that the upper reverb now has signal, even when there's no input assigned. This signal is coming from the lower reverb. It's the dry signal with some conditioning, diffusion, delay, gain, EQ, etc. If I pan the source around, you'll see that it's tracking in both lower and upper reverbs. You can see that the parameters on the 3D page have also appeared, so we'll now be able to control the link. Most important is the link in parameter. That controls the gain of signal that's passed into this reverb from the other reverb. You can have a little or a lot. Next is Link Filter Frequency, a simple EQ that's applied to the transferred signal. A certain amount of filtering is expected as a signal travels through space, but how much is up to you. The height parameter controls the delay between low and high reverbs, allowing you to raise the virtual ceiling. And finally, there's the crossmix parameter. I can explain this best by panning our input signal. You'll see input in both reverbs. But now I'll pan to the side speakers. There's signal in the low reverb, but nothing in the high. This is because the high reverb has no side channels. This may be the effect you want, but it may not. And this is where crossmix comes in. If I raise the value, you can see that the high reverb is beginning to get signal. Crossmix is actually a controllable down mixer. It kicks in whenever there is a different channel count between upper and lower reverbs. In the example we're using now, you'll probably want it at max. But in another situation, let's say 5.1 on the bottom and LCR on the top, you might want something different. You can adjust crossmix until you get what you need. All of these parameters will automate smoothly, so you can change the nature of the space 
as your mix progresses. I'm showing you an example that has dry input only into the low reverb. But if you have another bus with input for high channels, you can also use that as input to the high reverb. That signal will be shared with the low reverb, just as the low signal comes up to the high. If you have a signal that passes through a 3D panner, you can move it freely through the space. Left, right, front, back, low, high, all around. At this point in the video, we have a linked reverb, but you can see that all parameters are independent. We can load one preset into the high reverb, and a different preset in the low reverb. For some mixes, this is just what you need. One space high and another space low with a smooth transition for signals moving in the vertical plane. The reverbs can be controlled and automated with complete independence. But in other cases, you want a single unified room with parameters and presets matching. For that, we have parameter link. Simply move it to the linked position and you'll see that the parameters of this reverb were immediately transferred to the other reverb. From this point onward, parameter and preset changes made on one reverb will happen on both. It doesn't matter which one you adjust, the other will follow. It's good practice to choose one copy of the reverb as your master. You should only automate that one reverb and the other will follow. Parameter link is the only parameter that can't be automated. This is a choice that lasts for the duration of the mix. That's nearly all you need to know, but there's one last thing to point out. In the example I've shown you, the high reverb has no assigned input. It receives all of its input from the other reverb. This is a typical way to generate 3D reverb from a 2D source. But you might find that a different workstation won't process this track without an assigned input. You can understand this. Why bother to run a track if there doesn't appear to be any audio going there? If this happens in your workstation, this is all you need to do. Assign the same input to both reverbs. You don't really want this input here, since it's not properly delayed and treated, but you have to trick the workstation. Now, click the Ignore Track Input button. The track will be run by the workstation, but the direct input is ignored, and only the treated input from the other reverb is accepted. That's it. You now have 3D Reverb. Happy mixing, and thanks for watching.